Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and today I'm going to show you how I put on this Iron Man suit. So you guys have been seeing the Mark 39 Star Boost completed around my socials and I want to show you today how I actually take the suit on and off. How I'm wearing it, what's going on underneath, and how I was able to upgrade it so I could put this entire thing on 100% by myself. Now I already made a video like this in regarding the Mark 85 that you guys saw a while ago, but I've made some really awesome improvements to the suit, its quality of life, it just makes everything so much better. But let me get out of this thing and we can start talking about, well, how to wear it. Time. Okay, so before we put the suit on, let's talk about what goes on, well, underneath the suit. And if you're not interested in any of this part, you can jump to this timestamp to just watch me start suiting up. But a common question I get asked is, what do I wear underneath the suit? Is it spandex? Is it some type of clothing? Like, what's going on here? So let's just start from the feet down. Comfortable shoes are a must. Foot comfort is a number one priority. It doesn't matter how sweet and awesome your costume is. If you can't walk in it or stand for prolonged periods of time, what's really the point? With that, compression socks go a long way for circulation and blood flow and not really hurting your feet and some nice uh, shoe inserts help a lot too. The knees, there is a lot of moving plastic here. A lot of moving plastic that can pinch your skin and can really leave some damage. And yes, there's ways to engineer and avoid this, but realistically, you wanna make sure your knees are probably the second most comfortable part of your body because again, you're gonna be walking around and I don't want this plastic pinching and leaving scars. It is one of the worst feelings in the suit ever because it just locks you up and you freeze in place. Now, I used to just wrap my knee in EVA foam, but that was starting to get a little bit expensive. So I actually found these compression knee braces and they're very comfortable and they also kind of help with any knee pain you might be having from walking around and standing all day, but they're really built up padded on the sides. So anywhere that's gonna get pinched from the suit or from the plastic moving, this is gonna help a lot. You can actually see it's slightly worn down there. So this helps a lot with avoiding any uncomfortable situations and uh, it actually kind of just fills in that gap and makes it look a little bit better. Covering all of that up is a basic black spandex suit. Uh, you can get these at any type of, you know, sportswear store or, um, you know, on Amazon. Now, I chose black for Star Boost because there's really not much going on underneath it. Unlike my Mark 85 over here where I have a color matched spandex suit that really helps fill in those gaps on the arms and the knees and around the neck. Um, but for Star Boost, I didn't need that. So I just got some black spandex. For the hands, pretty standard white gloves just to fill in those gaps, and this is gonna vary depending on what suit you're wearing. Um, for the Mark 85, I use red spandex. Some people use black spandex. Um, you can use silver, whatever, but it helps cover up those gaps. Definitely take this in consideration when you're scaling your hands. I don't glue the fabric to the glove. This way I can slide the glove on and off, and it makes it a lot more comfortable. Again, plastic pinching and scraping and rubbing, that can get annoying over time, but with these gloves underneath it, I don't feel it, and it looks pretty good. Now, covering up the neck or any exposed parts of your jaw and chin are great. Now, I do have a kind of a neck cover for the suit, but it really only goes uh, so far. And in terms of star boost, I wanted it to be more comfortable. So I didn't make the neck come all the way up. In this case, I'm using uh, just standard uh, balaclavas. It's a black balaclava. You can get them for helmets or motorcycles. Um, and I, I can get a white one, I can get a silver one, but I think the black one just looks a lot better. And uh, here, I'm gonna be an idiot on camera for a second. Now, wearing something like this does three things. Not only does it cover up my neck and you know fill in that gap, it also stops the helmet from rubbing on my head. Um, because of the servos in the suit, it pushes on like my widow's peak pretty badly. So this gives it a little bit of protection. And it also gives me a spot to run wires up the back of my neck to kind of hide those from the back of the suit. Now, you will see when I put Starboost on that it's still not perfect. I'm still refining it, but it definitely helps you know with the flow of everything. And it also helps with keeping your hair in place. If you have longer hair, it's a good way to tuck everything back and you don't have weird stray hairs kind of sticking out. But uh, yeah, it definitely helps make everything look a lot more cohesive. You can't see any of my skin and it just looks better. And there are a billion and one ways to do this. I think every Iron Man cosplayer I know has something that's just a little bit different. Something different for their knees, something different for their hands or their undersuit. I know people who just wear normal clothes going on underneath it. But definitely take this uh, level of comfort into consideration when wearing your armor, when scaling it, when planning it, because 
it can go a long way in making you comfortable at a convention. And the last thing I'll say for the male audience while trying to keep this as PG as possible, um, make sure you're keeping things in place with like compression shorts or a dancer's belt. And if you don't know what a dancer's belt is, I am not going to explain it right now. Just know that if you are a male Spider-Man cosplayer and you don't know what a dancer belt is, you are part of the problem. So we're going to get the suit all staged up and I'm going to put a little bit of this on or at least as much as I feel comfortable putting on the internet. And uh, yeah, we'll start suiting up. So. Let's take a look. Okay, so I have everything staged around the room. Um, I'm gonna have the camera set up there so you guys can like watch me suit up or it's in a good position. The legs kind of stand up by themselves with the shoes inserted there. I just have them leaning against the wall. I have the entire backpack assembly pre-buckled. The shoulders are buckled, the lower back to the butt plate. So I can put all of that on at once. I have the chest plate somewhere I can reach it so I don't need to lay down along with the ab plate and the butt plate or the cod piece. And then I have everything else over here. I have the arms laid out where I can get them. I have the balaclava, the gloves, um, and then the helmet. This way I can just think about how I'm going to be suiting up, put everything on in the proper order, and uh, make everything as easy as possible. All right, time to start suiting up. As for what I'm wearing, like I said, my comfortability being on camera in 4K, I do have the knee braces on, and I'm wearing some black cargo shorts. Obviously, I'm not wearing the super tight spandex, uh, but I do have this black shirt on to cover up some of the gaps, and then I will eventually put the balaclava on as well. So I think it's time to start suiting up. Okay, first up the torso, and I have the balaclava halfway around my neck to make it easier, so let's lift this up. Okay, once that's loosely fitted on, we can go ahead and throw these two buckles around, so just kinda, kinda help keep everything in place. So this is what we're looking like so far. I already feel like a tank. Now this is a part I'm still working out in terms of getting the wire up through the balaclava while getting the neck piece on. So it's a little finicky and uh, here's a time lapse of me doing it. Basically involves me having to push the back off, slide the wire up, put the neck on, and then pick the chest back, the backpack back over the neck. It, I'll figure it out one day, but I can still do it. And now the wire is sticking out so I can plug it into the helmet when the time comes. Now underneath the cod piece is an elastic strap that comes from the butt plate up to the front. And this keeps the cod piece closed so it doesn't open and slide up and risk pinching anything. But I'm not gonna show myself putting this part on on camera, but it buckles into the side too. After the cod piece is on, these cool little hip pods on the side kind of cover up that gap uh, so you really can't see anything going on there. Next up is the ab plate. There's a buckle right at the bottom, some magnets for the side right here, and then two puck buckles that hold it up to the chest. Ab plate on. You know what I'm realizing I didn't do? I didn't turn on the battery pack for the back boosters. Um, that's a switch. I'm not too worried about it, but I know the helmet will still work. That battery pack doesn't have an on off switch. That's my bad. This is a absolutely perfect example of making sure all your switches and power things are on before you start putting the suit on. Um, I might be able to reach in there. Nah, it's not worth it. Whatever. Hey, the back booster lights aren't going to be on. Deal with it. But what I can do is still plug in the arc reactor here and let the chest light turn on. See, that looks pretty cool. The chest is super simple to put on. I just slide it around like this, throw the two buckles in, and then you can see the attaching magnet points right here. And all I have to do is get them underneath the backpack. Listen to that click. Very satisfying, good. That's a good solid sound. And the reason it buckles here is just to help move the abs up as I kind of flex and twist around but that's the whole upper torso and body on. And honestly, it feels pretty cool wearing this thing. I can still put my helmet on without the arms on, but before I do that, I'm gonna step into the legs. Now, I could have put the legs on to begin with, but since they're one of the more uncomfortable parts of the suit, and the fact that I can put on the upper torso and then step into them makes things way more comfortable and easier. Um, one part of the foot did break uh, earlier when I was getting everything staged. It's just a little flap on the front. I can glue it back on. I'm not worried about it. All right, now with the suit on, I'm a little bit taller, readjusted the camera. Now we're gonna do the helmet. Usually I'll pull this up a little bit more. This way I can get it tucked into the jaw. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the helmet. 
put on the jaw. Make sure that's locked in there nice and good. Do some final adjustments of the neck and the helmet's on. Okay, just throw these on. Okay, so this is typically the spot Okay, so this is typically the spot where I would be stuck. I would need somebody's assistance to help slide the arms up and buckle them underneath the shoulders. Now, I could put the arms on before I put the chest on, but then I can't get things lined up right, and it just, it's a absolute nightmare. But now, thanks to the technology of the internet and the power of anime, I can suit up the arms by myself now. I have three retractable lanyards clipped into uh, the, the chest underneath the shoulders, and this way I can reach up with one hand, grab them, pull the lanyard buckle out, and clip it into the arm. Now the arms are basically one solid piece, all held together with a bunch of buckles and straps. This way I can let it hang from the buckle that's sitting in there and slide my entire arm up, and then I can plug in the gloves right here, and we're good to go. So let's test this out now. And that's it. The arm is completely held up. Um, it supports 24 ounces, uh, eight ounces on each lanyard. I got three 24 ounces. So the arm is there and it's secure and now I can put the glove on, but let's do the other arm. Now, see, I, I could never hope to reach that buckle on my other shoulder. However, I can just reach up, grab the lanyard, buckle it in. Both arms are now buckled in, secure, laying exactly where they need to go. Last thing to do is the gloves. And luckily, I can touch my hands together so I can plug in the buckles for the, uh, for the reactors or repulsors. So with a little finessing, I was able to get the fingers on. I, both repulsors turn on and off, which is great. And I'm able to get Starboost on 100% by myself. So that's pretty much it for this suit, guys. Um, putting it on is very straightforward. Uh, I was obviously taking my time because I was trying to record, I was on camera, and I've only done the self suit up uh, three times by myself now, and I can get it on in under 10 minutes or less. I think if I really rushed it, I could probably get it down to five minutes, and that's why if any of you guys are watching this and have your own suits, I wanna challenge you to a race. I wanna see who can get, rude. I wanna see who can get their suit on the quickest. If you have an Iron Man suit, I wanna challenge you to make a TikTok or an Instagram video seeing how quickly you can get the suit on. And I think I'm gonna do two different categories and I'm gonna post a video too. I wanna to do one version where it's how quickly can you get in the suit by yourself? And obviously if you can't get in the suit by yourself, that's not the category for you, but I wanna see who's the quickest at it. I think my five minutes might be a pretty cool record. And then I'm gonna do one for the Mark 85 um, assisted because I do need help getting that suit on, especially the arms. But I think that'd be a really fun uh, little challenge to start sending around in the Iron Man community. Who can suit up the quickest, you know? It's not as quick as Tony Stark, you know, tapping his chest, but hey, uh, I think it's pretty good. So please keep an eye out for those videos across my other socials, and it'll probably end up being a YouTube short on here too, because I think that'd be pretty interesting. And definitely stay tuned for a dedicated tutorial on these arms, on uh, attaching the lanyards, things to consider, the little trial and error I had to go through with the strength and weight testing. Um, I didn't want to put it in this video because I think it'll help other cosplays and suits. I've already seen uh, people in the Halo community and Stormtrooper, Star Wars kind of community asking me questions about the lanyard. So I definitely want to make that its own video. So make sure you're subscribed and you stay tuned for that video and pretty much anything else I have coming out. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in this video, please drop a comment down below. I read all of them and I do my best to respond to as many as possible. But I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day. Actually, I do have one more thing to say. Um, that is, it's a very popular TikTok question and I've even had people at cons ask, how do you go to the bathroom in the suit? No, I'm not gonna imitate the scene from Iron Man 2. You hold it like an adult. Do you guys just walk around peeing when you feel like you just have to? No, you hold it. Hey, I might have to go to the bathroom. Nope, I'm gonna hold that in because I'm an adult and I pay bills. Why is that a question?